What's up guys, I'm Cheyenne, that's Hall Book Girl. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my top 10 books of 2022. I can't even believe I'm filming this right now and that I'm getting ready to share my favorite books, one of my top 10 favorite books that I read in the year 2022. This was like such a great year for me. I'm getting ready to celebrate one year on booktube in January. Um, just full of like so many milestones that I'm very proud of and thankful for. And I have read some amazing books and just narrowing down this list was so difficult, but I'm really happy with these ones. And I think that, I mean, you guys have heard me gush about these books constantly, but actually like putting them in an order of one through 10, like one being my favorite and 10 being like still a favorite, but like the least of the 10, I just, I, it was so hard. <laughs> it was so hard. And I almost feel like I'm like cheating on or like hurting the feelings of some of my favorite book characters, but whatever. And authors too. All of the uh, these authors on this list know how much I love them and I love their books. So I'm just really excited to gush about them. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll start with number 10. So I don't own this book, which I'm not really sure why and I probably should soon, but number 10, we are coming in with Passion and Venom by Shonora Williams. This is a dark romance that really, really took me by surprise. Um, it was one that I picked up on a whim for a readathon, and I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did. It was absolutely incredible. Um, our hero in this, he is like a big mafia boss, and our heroine, she is on her wedding day. She's marrying her husband. They're getting ready to take off on their honeymoon, and he gets killed right in front of her, and she is kidnapped by him. Well, kidnapped by like the mafia people, like the bad guys in town, whatever you want to call it. She wakes up and she's in this big cell. She has no idea where she's at. And she sees the guy who captured her and realizes that it's someone that she knows from like her childhood and when she was younger. And he all of a sudden is like wanting to make her pay, like feeling like she needs to pay for something, but also like completely just crazy about her and enamored by her and like wants to serve her at the same time and like wants to give her all the things but also wants to torture her at the same time. So it's just incredible, incredible. And it's a three book trilogy. Um, just amazing. Shonora Williams, last year I discovered her and she is one of my top autobi authors, one that I will constantly, I, I will read everything that she writes. So I just, this is another favorite. All right, and coming in at number nine is a book that another one that I just, I like read on a whim and I was not expecting to love as much as I did and that's Home Game by Odette Stone. You guys have heard me rave about this book because it's so freaking good. Like, I think I discovered so many new sports romances this year that I really loved. And before I wasn't, I didn't really gravitate towards sports romances unless I was really in the mood, but they have been like coming out like crazy. And some of the ones that we have found have just been amazing. Um, this is no exception to that. Our heroine in this book, she is actually homeless and she meets our hero. He's a professional hockey player. He needs some help like with his accounting, with his finances. And she sees him in a coffee shop and he offers to give her a ride home. She's actually staying at a homeless shelter and they end up like just missing the time where like the doors close and they won't take anybody else in for the night. So she ends up having nowhere to stay and it's either like on the streets or, you know, she could have gotten to the shelter. Well, he feels super bad because he held her up because she was helping him and he offers her a place to stay. So this is their romance together and it is one of the slowest burns, but like so beautiful, so beautiful. Like talk about a relationship that really has to be built up and is on like different playing fields. Like they have to be at a level for their relationship to work where they're more equals. And at the point where she's at, where she's homeless and like needs stability and needs to like reestablish her life. Um, they're on very different equilibrium. So in order for them to be able to make it work, um, there's a lot of growing up that both of them have to do and a lot of sacrifices and like just growth in their own lives that has to happen and take place. So I just adore this book so much. It's one of my all time favorites, especially for a sports romance. Number nine. I think back to like all of my favorite parts about it and I'm like, oh yeah, that's definitely going on there. And that is Welcome to the Dark Side by Gianna Darling. Number eight. Um, absolutely incredible. Like one of my favorite age gaps. I just always say Daddy Zeus because he is like a big burly man of just pure sexiness. Like he's a 10, he's a 10. And this age gap is massive. It starts from when our heroine is younger. Zeus is in the Fallen Men Club, the motorcycle club, and he is a bad joker. He is a bad joker. And he ends up actually like protecting Lou, who is our heroine. Um, he ends up protecting her when she's a lot younger and he ends up getting arrested for it. He spends all these years in jail and they actually are like pen pals with one another, but 
it's very, it's very like platonic and like there's nothing there because she's so young in the beginning. But as she gets older, um, things start to change a little bit. And then he gets out of jail. She's like 17, I think. And he sees her for the first time and he's like, holy freaking smokes. Like who knew I could be attracted to a 17 year old like this? And listen, the mouth on this man, the mouth on this man. Um, this book is just, just like 10 pounds of excellence. I, I loved it. Number eight, so good. All right, and then we have number seven, which I don't feel like I could have this list without adding a Candy Steiner book, and that's Fair Catch by Candy Steiner. I love this book, and I am so in the minority because everybody is obsessed with Blindside, but this book just was everything that I wanted. Um, Zeke is one of my most favorite heroes. This is a brother's best friend. This is a, well, they're roommates. They play on the same football team, our heroine Riley. She is actually the kicker for the college football team. She's a badass. She is amazing. I just loved her as a character and like that type of uniqueness of the story where she was on the men's football team and like her gaining the respect. There was a lot of football in this, which normally I'd be like, okay, can we just like cut more to the romance? But I loved it. And actually like it made for a lot of angsty times because Zeke, our hero, would see her with other guys on the football team and just get mad jealous. Like he was obsessive and possessive to a T and it was perfect. It was just perfect. Like so many moments in this are left like rent free in my head that I just love and adore. Like one of my favorite for forced proximity, um, just, uh, it just like is that comfort read book to me that just makes me warm inside because I remember so many parts about it that I loved. And the next book coming in at number six is Restore Me by JL Seegers. I discovered this book because of Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life. She was raving about it. It's one of her favorites. Um, so I had to jump on that bandwagon. I am all about angsty romances, especially something that's very forbidden. And this definitely is. Um, our heroine in this, she recently loses her husband and she falls for his best friend. So they are very much enemies to lovers. They hate each other, even throughout the course of like when her husband was still alive and they would do all the friend things. Um, he despised her. He was terrible to her, but he had his reasoning. And when you want to read about a pining hero and a hero who is head over heels madly in love with his woman, um, this is Dominic. And Dominic just was, it was so romantic, was so intentional about his feelings. It was just, I, took me completely by surprise. And sometimes I'm like speechless just even thinking about it because of how romantic and intimate the book felt. Um, such a beautiful, beautiful love story, a heartbreaking love story because they have to work through their grief from losing her husband and his best friend and how to navigate these new feelings and this relationship that they want to have together. Um, it was just, it was incredible, incredible. So beautifully written. Like the writing is so similar to Kennedy Ryan to me, just very elegant and classy but also just like grips you by the throat and makes you want, not want to stop reading and pay attention the entire time. So not once did I get bored, even though this book is massive, um, it's absolutely beautiful. All right, and the next book is one of my favorites. I talk about this book all the time. All of these are my favorites, so I don't even know why I'm saying that, but that's The Naked Fisherman by Jewel E. And this is coming in at number five. Um, this entire duet, so I really wanna include The Lost Fisherman too. This duet is amazing amazing it is my all-time favorite by jewel e and still to this day my favorite duet by her it's just freaking fabulous like angst story you want to throw a book across the room um if you like to see progression in your characters especially a heroine she's very naive she's sheltered she is someone who um grew up around a certain type of morals, but really has to find herself and what she believes in her own self. And that's what she goes through in this. So it definitely takes patience, but I, I love that. I love seeing growth and progression in a heroine, especially. Um, she is estranged from her mother. Her mother just recently got out of jail. She's been in jail for five years. She hasn't seen her or heard from her or anything like that. And she goes to stay with her for the summer. And her mom is actually renting from this man named Fisher and Fisher is her landlord. And our heroine ends up falling for the landlord. And it is like slow burn. And that's why it's a duet. So much of the like forbidden and taboo-ness in this because she is a Christian. She doesn't want to like have any type of fornications with him, but Fisher is so irresistible that she doesn't know how to stay away. And their chemistry is like magic. It's electric and something that's tangible. And Julie Ian does the best job at writing that. So it's just so angsty. And then like towards the end, a huge cliffhanger. So you want to keep reading and it's just 
it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. I don't know what is going on with my hair today, but we got a hot mess express going on. Okay, number four. I just get so happy thinking about this book, thinking about this author, and that is Flawless by Elsie Silver. Flawless is the first book in the Chestnut Spring series, and it's everything that the hype says it is. Um, we are following Summer and Rhett, and Summer is, well, her dad is like the uh, agent of Rhett. He's a professional bull rider. And Summer has been set to babysit Rhett. He's been making some very poor choices and he needs to kind of like get his career like on a level where um, he looks good and he's not like ruining all these chances he has and like just trying to save his career a little bit and Summer happens to be very good at that. Um, she tends to be a little bit of a control freak in the best way. And Summer and Rhett hate each other in the beginning. Well, it's more like hate to love, yeah, because she has to stay with him. She has to watch his every move. And he's like, who is this girl all up in my house, all up in my business, like trying to tell me what to do. Um, that's summer and you're going to love her one day. And the tension in this book, um, Elsie always puts forced proximity in all of her books. So this has that like two AT they're stuck in a house together. They go on tours together of his tours. They were stuck in hotel rooms together. So many moments that just make for a really good time. And Elsie can write the best dirty talking like blue collar man and I just eat it up. I eat it up so, so, so good. Coming in at number three is one of my favorite series now of all time and this is my favorite book in that series and that is Twist by Lucia Franco. I read the Off Balance series for the first time this year, the entire series, binge the entire thing in like five days and I was not disappointed at all. It was the most epic romance, um, age gap, coach athlete our heroine she ends up going like down south to train for the olympics she has this big dream of being in the olympics the coach in the beginning is kova and kova is very like uh-huh yeah everybody wants to do that we'll see that how, how that happens like you have to show up and prove your worth like prove your place here and she does that and she also falls for kova and their romance i am just like just thinking about them makes me teary eyed makes me I, I it was like an experience that I will never forget reading their story. And this book specifically is my favorite in the entire thing. This is the book where like everything blows up and hits the fan. But their their relationship is like taken to this whole other level. And the intimacy that you see between them in this like you feel their love to the core and you feel how much this is well, how much they're sacrificing and how much they're risking for this, but also how much they love each other and how deep that love is that they have for each other. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. We're also doing a read along for this in January. I'm doing it with McKay and Caitlin, the love librarian and Oh, Hey, it's McKay. Um, so I get to reread the whole series and I just, I can't wait to be back in their story. All right. Now we're narrowing it down to some of my favorites. Um, Okay, so number two and number one, these are big books that have, they have impacted my life. They have impacted my love for reading romance. They have impacted the way, like the expectations that I hold on books that I read now. I'm a heavy DNFer. If I don't like a book, I am going to DNF it because you know what? Life's too freaking short to read books that you don't like. There are plenty of books out there that you could like, so I'm not going to waste my time on reading one that I don't. That's just my prerogative. Um, and these books held really high expectations in that realm for me of what a book needs to deliver for me to really love it and for it to be a five star or six star read or whatever you want to call it. Um, Praise by Sarah Kate is my number two. This book is immeasurably exactly what it says it will be and what people say it like it's just it's incredible. It is incredible. Sarah Kate she just has a way of sucking you into this world that she creates. And in this case, it's the Salacious Players Club. She created this world of this kink club that is supposed to be this bad and dirty thing, but made it feel like family, made it feel like family. And you really get that in all of her characters. Um, Praise is the first book, and this is an age gap. This is a ex-boyfriend's father. And I, I just have no words for how amazing this book is. I... I don't even I don't even know what to say like I remember reading it for the first time and not being able to stop and being like what is this and how can I get more of this how can I feel so much for like a smutty book this book that is like pure spice but just has this emotional handle and this emotional grip on you that is I just can't even explain 
Um, all of her characters feel that way. And I just was so engrossed in the writing. I was so engrossed in this world. I was so engrossed in these, this couple that it just made it one of my favorites. And Sarah Kate is such a awesome human. She is like, she just is so deserving of all of this. So this entire series is amazing, but praise is my favorite. Number one, there's going to be no surprise that one number one is I've already said this on Instagram. I literally have not stopped talking about this book and I'm just trying to like rein it in a little bit because I'm like, people are going to get real sick of, they're going to be like, do you read anything other than Heartless by Elsie Silver? Do you talk about anything other than Heartless by Elsie Silver? Why? No, no, I do not. Because this book is everything that it should be. And it deserves all the freaking credit it gets like slow burn, forced proximity, a the most romantic type of love, a age gap, a, a just like a heroine who is so uniquely herself and so positive and such a force to be reckoned with, and a hero who is responsible, who's a loving father, who takes care of his family, but who is like grumpy and moody, but like only soft for the person that he loves and also just like a provider and a protector and someone who wants to take control over someone but like in a good way in a way that benefits them and like makes them feel safe that is how this couple feels and but he's also dirty talking and he's also like he'll stick panties in your mouth well not my mouth but her mouth and it is just it's everything it is everything i was so engrossed in this book like I, I, it, it's just very unexplainable. All of my favorites are unexplainable because there's this feeling that you get and that's what makes them your favorites. And it says so much about an author and their ability to write and like transform your thinking and bring you from like reality to this fictional world and make it worth it and make it something that you don't want to come out of. And that's how I felt reading this book. I, I love it. And I don't know if there's ever going to be anything that can top it. I think Elsie's writing just keeps getting better and better. And um, I can't wait to see what's in store from her for this next year. I can't wait for Powerless. But this book is going to hold a top place for a long time. And it's going to take a lot to beat it. But best book of 2022 by far. Like, I would not be surprised if this book is on everybody else's list um, because it's deserving of it and it's worth it and it's freaking fabulous. Now, there were a bunch of other books too that I felt like really should have made the cut. Um, so many Katharina Mora books I've just recently discovered that I love, love by her. Other Sarah Kate, other Julie Ann, like just a lot of other books that I've read that I have loved. Um, just didn't quite make it though, but that's fine. Like that does not mean I didn't love them or I didn't think that they were great. Like they all have been favorites, but these top 10 have really like truly impacted me and made my year of reading. So I am super proud of this. Um, I just, I can't believe it. I can't believe we're going into January. Like it's just crazy to me, crazy to me going into a new year. Um, I don't set Goodreads goals, but I am very confident that I'm going to have my best year yet coming up. So I'm really excited for that. Thank you guys for sticking around and being on my channel. I know some of you guys are like, OG from when I started this channel a year ago and hopefully I've grown a lot to you and like you've benefited from being on my channel so thank you for being here um, I can't wait to see what next year has in store and um, yeah this is gonna be fun thank you guys so much for watching please don't forget to like comment subscribe and I'll see you next time bye guys well see you in 2023